Yes. And you see like three or four pythons yes. are in his fucking ceiling. And they're deep in the Florida Everglades. One of America's most precious ecosystems is under siege. An invisible war is being fought between conservationists and an enemy that slithers through the sawgrass, silent and deadly. Burmese pythons, apex predators that don't belong here, and they're winning. But scientists have developed a weapon the pythons never saw coming, and it hops. This is the story of how technology became the last hope for one of Earth's most unique wetlands, the Florida Everglades. A vast river of grass covering 1.5 million acres, home to alligators, panthers, manatees, and over 350 species of birds. It's a wetland paradise unlike anywhere else on Earth. But beneath this serene surface lurks a catastrophe decades in the making. It started in the 1,980 seconds and 90 seconds. Burmese pythons, native to Southeast Asia, were popular exotic pets. When Hurricane Andrew devastated South Florida in 1992, it destroyed a python breeding facility, releasing dozens of snakes into the wild. But that was just the beginning. Irresponsible pet owners, realizing these snakes could grow to 20 feet long and weigh over 200 pounds, began releasing them into the Everglades. The pythons found paradise. No natural predators. Abundant prey. Perfect climate. They didn't just survive, they thrived. By 2012, research published by the U.S. Geological Survey revealed a horror story. In areas with established python populations, raccoon populations down 99.3%, opossums down 98.9%, bobcats down 87.5%, marsh rabbits and foxes virtually eliminated. An entire food web, millions of years in the making, decimated in just two decades. The ripple effects are devastating. Wading birds lose their food sources. Panthers, already critically endangered, struggle to find prey. The delicate balance that makes the Everglades unique is collapsing. What makes Burmese pythons such effective invaders? These are ambush predators perfected by evolution. They can grow up to 23 feet long, go months without eating, survive in both water and on land, sense heat signatures from prey, and expand their jaws to swallow prey whole. And here's the nightmare scenario. A single female can lay up to 100 eggs at a time. By conservative estimates, there are now between 100,000 and 300,000 pythons in the Everglades. The question wasn't if action needed to be taken. It was. How do you fight an enemy you can barely find? In 2013, Florida officials tried something unprecedented. They invited the public to help. The Python Challenge was born. Hunters from across the nation descended on the Everglades, armed with permits and determination, cash prizes, media attention. The first year, they had high hopes. The result? In one month, with over 1,600 participants, they caught 68 pythons. It was a start, but the math was sobering. At this rate, it would take centuries to make a dent in the population. The Everglades didn't have centuries, so Florida doubled down. They hired professional python removal agents, teams trained specifically for the job, working year-round, covering thousands of acres. These contractors patrol the roads at night, when pythons are most active, using spotlights to catch the glint of eyes or the reflection of scales. It's tedious, dangerous work. Since 2017, this program has removed over 17,000 pythons. Impressive, right? But experts estimate that's less than 5% of the total population. And while they're catching pythons, hundreds more are being born. The reality was clear. Conventional hunting methods weren't enough. They needed a force multiplier. Something that could find pythons faster, more efficiently. They needed to think like the pythons themselves. In 2021, wildlife managers tried a new approach. Specially trained detection dogs. These weren't ordinary dogs. 
They were trained to detect the specific scent signature of Burmese pythons, even when the snakes were hidden in burrows or underwater. The concept was proven in wildlife management. Dogs detect everything from invasive plants to endangered species. Why not pythons? And it worked. Sort of. Dogs like Truman, a mixed breed rescue, proved they could find pythons that human hunters would never spot. In their first year, the K-9 program located dozens of snakes that would have remained hidden. But the Everglades is brutal terrain. Extreme heat, aggressive wildlife, sharp sawgrass, and venomous snakes make it dangerous for dogs. They could only work a few hours at a time. They needed frequent breaks. And training specialized detection dogs was expensive and time-consuming. The dogs were a step forward, but wildlife managers knew they needed something more. Something that could work 24 sevenths. Something that didn't need rest or water breaks. But first, they would explore a controversial idea that would spark outrage and change everything. Scientists knew pythons, hunted by sensing heat and movement. What if, instead of searching for pythons, they made the pythons come to them? The proposal, use live rabbits as bait, tether them in python territory, and wait for the snakes to strike. When a python appeared, researchers could track, capture, or study it. The public response was immediate and fierce. Animal welfare groups condemned the plan. Social media erupted. Critics called it cruel and inhumane. The rabbits, they argued, would experience terror and suffering. How could conservation require the sacrifice of innocent animals? It raised a profound ethical question. Is it acceptable to sacrifice some animals to save an entire ecosystem? Do the needs of the many outweigh the suffering of the few? Researchers found themselves at a crossroads. They understood the concerns. They valued animal welfare too. But they also knew that every day of inaction meant more native wildlife falling to python predation. The program was halted before it truly began. But the idea had planted a seed. If live bait was too controversial, what if they could create something? that served the same purpose without the ethical concerns? What if they could build the perfect bait? Enter the next generation of conservation technology, robotic rabbit decoys. These aren't simple mechanical toys. They're sophisticated pieces of engineering designed to mimic everything a python looks for in prey. Each robot rabbit is equipped with heat generators maintaining the exact body temperature of a real rabbit around 101 degrees Fahrenheit. Scent emitters releasing compounds that replicate rabbit pheromones and scent markers. Movement mechanisms creating subtle vibrations and movements that simulate breathing and small adjustments real rabbits make. GPS tracking, allowing researchers to monitor their locations in real time. And cameras and sensors recording when pythons approach, strike, or interact with the decoys. The robots had to be rugged enough to survive the Everglades environment, waterproof, camouflaged, and convincing enough to fool a predator with millions of years of evolution behind it. In early 2024, the first robotic rabbits were deployed in known python hotspots. Researchers positioned them in strategic locations and waited. Within 48 hours, they had their first strike. Infrared cameras captured a 14-foot python approaching the decoy tongue flicking, sensing the heat signature. The python coiled, struck, and attempted to constrict the mechanical rabbit. Alerted by the robot's sensors, a removal team arrived within minutes and captured the python. The first of what researchers hope will be thousands. But the robots do more than just attract pythons. They're gathering unprecedented data on python behavior. Activity patterns. When are pythons most active? Territory ranges. How far do they travel? Hunting strategies. How do they select prey? Population density. Where are the hot spots? This information is revolutionizing how managers approach python removal 
Instead of random patrols, they can now target high activity areas. They can predict when and where pythons will be hunting. It's the difference between searching the ocean for a specific fish and knowing exactly where the fish will be at feeding time. Early results are promising, but the real challenge is scale. The Everglades is vast. Researchers estimate they'll need thousands of robotic decoys working simultaneously to make a significant impact. Each robot costs approximately $3,000 to build. They need maintenance, battery replacements, and eventual replacement. The question isn't if it works, it's whether we can deploy it at a scale that matters. The robotic rabbit program represents something bigger than just Python management. It's a glimpse into the future of conservation. Invasive species are a global crisis. From lionfish in the Caribbean, to wild pigs in Texas, to cane toads in Australia, ecosystems worldwide face similar threats. The techniques developed in the Everglades could be adapted for countless other situations. But let's be clear, this isn't a silver bullet. Even with thousands of robotic decoys, even with hunting programs and detection dogs, experts don't expect to eliminate pythons from the Everglades completely. The goal isn't eradication, it's control. Reducing python numbers enough that native wildlife can recover, creating a new balance, even if it's not the same as before. Behind every technological solution are dedicated people, researchers who spend years developing these tools, wildlife officers patrolling at 2 a.m., conservationists who refuse to give up on an ecosystem that others might consider lost. The python invasion happened because of human choices, released pets, escaped captives. Our responsibility now is to make better choices. For those with exotic pets, never release them into the wild. Support and report invasive species programs. And remember that every ecosystem, no matter how damaged, is worth fighting for. The Everglades is resilient. It survived hurricanes, droughts, and human development. With tools like robotic decoys, detection dogs, and human determination, it can survive this too. Nature doesn't give up easily, and neither should we. In the battle between an invasive species and human ingenuity, the Everglades has a fighting chance, and sometimes that's all you need. Thanks for watching. If you found this story fascinating, please like and subscribe for more stories about the incredible intersection of nature and technology. What do you think about using robotic decoys for conservation? Let us know in the comments below. And remember, the next time you're considering an exotic pet, think about where it might end up. The Everglades are still recovering from that lesson.